Hey, what's going on you guys? How you doing today? So this video, it's documenting some of the just incredible landslides, mudslides that we had over a year ago that wiped out Highway 38 for three months. Uh, the destruction and everything down there was so much worse than I just magnitudes above anything I could have even imagined. It's so horrible down there. But long story short, I got to meet a really neat um, gentleman. His name is Dan. He runs an organization down there um, that helps folks who are, or kids who are in difficult situations. And uh, he, he does an amazing deed. Uh, I want to give you guys some information about them so you can donate if you want, because uh, the, the county and the state has raised their uh, fees by 500% since all this natural disaster stuff has been happening up here. Um, and they're a non a nonprofit, so they could really, really use the help. You're gonna wanna go to www.campallendale.org forward slash give. And you can also just go to campallendale.org to check out what they're all about. But, you know, great cause. He gave me a great interview about everything going on down there. I hope you guys enjoy the video. As I said, it is a, a little bit hard to watch, but um, it's a restricted area. You'll learn all about it. Enjoy the video and uh, see what our mountain range goes through. Take care, guys. And one more thing. Of course, the information is going to be put in the description of the video as well. Um, thank you. So little Nick is back with tons more heat Let's hop in the Subi, you can take the front seat With a mic in my hand and a cam by my side I'm bringing you updates, no need to hide Reppin' the merch, the brand in bold Beanies to keep you cozy and the jackets for the cold Sippin' from a mug, Big Bear style Funny designs that will make you smile Gifts for the kids, your dad and your mom Check it out at BigBearWeatherAndMore.com October 16, 2024, we are going into unfettered territory and uh, basically a part of this mountain range where no one's allowed unless you have uh, permits and uh, work permits or if you're with the fire authority, the forest service and stuff like that. So we're going to be going down into the Santa Ana riverbed really near where the fire was but not quite there. And also, it's gonna really display for you all of the all the damage that was caused from our our massive uh, mudslide, landslide that happened a, a couple years back that closed this road down for up to three months or something like that. So that's where we're headed right now with uh, my friends Brian and Tim and his cute, cute, cute little dog Bailey, nine weeks old. So yeah, anyways guys, as soon as we get there, uh, I'll give you some more information about it, but it's a beautiful morning, and uh, I hope you guys like the video. I know it's a lot of uh, destruction and stuff like that, but uh, it's just it's just stuff that none of you would be able to see, nor myself, so anytime I get an opportunity like this, I'm gonna jump on it. So yeah, this is gonna be stuff never seen before. Ah, you guys, you don't know about this spot, so forget it, but we're turning off the road right now to head down into the Santa Ana Riverbed. And yeah, I never seen, seen this spot either. And again, we need special permission to, to be down here. My buddy Brian does have all that. He, he provides the majority of the firewood that all of you who come and visit our town get get to use so you can be warm when we're really cold outside. So Brian's the man, absolutely the man. A gentle giant as well. Unless uh, you wanna do some BJJ with him, then he will twist you up like a damn pretzel. The guy's the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu champ right now. Proud of you for that too, man. 
but I think anything this guy puts his mind to, he will uh, absolutely crush it. He's got a winning attitude. These are the type of people we all need to keep in our lives. The winners, the go-getters. In this day and age, it's really hard to find those type of people. By the way, guys, it's th it was 32 degrees outside about 25 to 30 minutes ago when I showed up to Brian's house in the Big Bear area. So we're starting to get, get cold, get back to my favorite season. We're also going to be all So, oh my. Okay, so that's a big part of the destruction here, guys. That's, oh my gosh from the huge debris flow, damn. Just rip those trees completely off of their freaking foundations down there. Oh my gosh. Yeah, guys, it's crazy. And we're gonna be driving down there, driving across the Santa Ana River. Yeah, that's cool, bro. Thanks, man. And these guys are also gonna haul a huge load of wood back to town. We'll get much, much better views of all of this once we're down here, you guys. It's just a, a map of cheese. I never knew that there were cabins down here either. I, 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 I don't. Ripped apart. Yeah. I, I don't remember hearing anything about that. So that's pretty awful to hear. Is this government land over here? show you guys uh, Brian and Tim loading the wood up and stuff like that just be aware that this is not Brian's tractor Brian's got the, the super badass one <laughs> this, this is what is just down here for him to use means have to not talk or like like uh if you wanted to 
say something to each other, like, like, please, this is, I'm the one who's intruding here. You guys are kind enough to let me cruise along, so just don't, uh, <laughs> don't hold your breath for, for me at all. Uh, I mean, we're just, this is kind of, uh, we've been doing this for a few days now, so. On this same same route right here? Yeah. Okay. Two times a day. Yeah, these guys do real, real labor. Real labor, but again, it keeps all of you warm when you come up to our beautiful little town and visit, so. Guys, in, in the description of the video, I will once again put the uh, Brian's info for for the firewood, so you guys can uh, support the actual source. He's the El Chapo of firewood up here. He's right out the middle, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally. No middleman. Say hello to my little friend. It's really nice down here. Can you guys imagine this being part of your daily work just being in the middle the middle of the forest I know a lot of you who are sitting at a cubicle are probably dreaming of something like this yeah, but, this is our office 
yeah, this is their office, you guys. Definitely not easy work, though. I mean, it's, it's, I've, I've been a pencil pusher all my life, so this is something that would probably absolutely crush me, but it, there, there are trade-offs. You get to be out here every single day. All these little gates, these little offshoot roads here. No, oh, that's not your soda. It's not your soda. <laughs> I did not instigate that one, I promise. Is that sad? Mud and debris flow is possible. No kidding. hear that this this was one of the uh, routes that the firefighters took to uh, go fight fight this lion fire man what a journey man what a journey you get stuck out here with an out of control fire wow that's even the flash flood destroyed so many houses side of that hill you can see the erosion from it just flowing through like 30 feet high that's crazy well, yeah, debris filter all the way up here. yeah this is all oh my gosh this is all part of the debris fields guys all washed out that's yeah. that, it's just crazy how much like jeez louise man all right, here we go. We're coming up to the Santa Ana River right now. Yeah, their bridge was right here, and then it just broke and washed away. So there was a bridge right here, guys, and that is the remnants of it right there. Here we go. Going across the Santa Ana River. stuff that I guarantee you has not been on YouTube. Is that a church? Yep. This is a Christian camp. Oh, okay. But you can see right through there kind of like, where the rocks go. Oh my right. yeah. god. And then there's a debris tunnel. Look at all this. So th this is actually someone... This is where it all came through. Oh, That's man. why there's piles of sand over there. 
device. It's called Cam Allendale. And once again, he he got to open up a gate here. He's not on stilts either, you guys. He's just no, he's just walking normal. I'm a I can't say the M word, but I'm I'm a little person. This guy's like six foot eight. Everybody's a little person compared to <laughs> yeah, totally, dude. He's like, where'd dad go? Where'd dad go? Hey, Bailey. Hey, Bailey. Probably should have offered him a hand. No, he's good. I could have opened the game for him. Hey, sweetheart. How are you doing? How are you doing? Yeah, so I'm petting you. Does that mean I'm going to get bit now? Same thing too, right? Put the lock back over there. You tried to unlock the lock that wasn't able to unlock? <laughs> no, I didn't do that. Oh, God, I didn't I'll, do that. I'll try it out next week, next time. Tomorrow, I'm going to try it. Oh, here's this guy. Uh, this okay, guy. tell me, should I? Should I I'll shut it for a second. Put down the camera? All right. And then uh, I'll let you refill it. Okay, guys. So we're going to go cruise around. Take a look at some of these these flows. So here's here's the tractor that uh <laughs> Brian was he's like, and it's not my tractor, okay? He's like <laughs> he's a little bit embarrassed by it. But my gosh, that thing looks freaking manly. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that these days. And I wore shorts, I am so cold right now. It's still in the low 30s, but it should pick up soon. Yeah, this is all part of the debris flow and I'm not wearing the right shoes to be walking through all this stuff either. At least I don't think we're gonna have to worry about snakes because it being too cold now. Gosh, I'm gonna so roll my ankle. I know it. But on the positive side of things, at least my soda's gonna stay cold. Oh my gosh, look at that. Would you look at it? I don't know why I keep on doing that Ed Bassmaster thing, but he is funny. Would you look at that? Would you look at it? Oh, what the heck was that? I'm still sleepwalking right now, so hope I don't step into any traps. I mean, geez, like just the erosion right there. On, on the other side over there, the walls are like 30 feet high of the damage and destruction. And out of respect for uh, the gentleman who runs this property, there are some things that I'm not, not gonna show obviously a bunch of water down here it's very stagnant right here but you can hear the water flowing on the other side which is where the Santa Ana River would be again I wish I would have worn the proper shoes today but I just didn't think about it and all the fire is about a half mile away from here 
you can you you you, you can smell it significantly more here than you can in the Big Bear area. Yeah, like look at all this 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 whole wall right here. I mean, this water flow was not here. And because of all the erosion from that huge landslide. I mean, guys, it's it was it was huge. As I said, one of our our main jugular veins into Big Bear, the 38 was closed for th three months or something like that. I'm gonna put the phone down for a minute and tie my shoes a lot tighter. I don't wanna take the risk, hang on. Yeah, guys, there's so many undulations around here. Just every step you take, your feet are bending in different directions. Thank gosh I just did that to my shoes because I just uh, stepped somewhere where my ankle rolled. <laughs> and if I wouldn't have tightened these things up, that I did, that probably would have been a problem. Gosh, I sound like such a wuss right now, don't I? I wish I could get across here somehow. shoes on I would go across it. I mean look at all that. All of that is flow. De debris flow. Everything you see. And when we're driving out, we're going to be able to get much, much better views because it's going to be out my window and I'll be able to keep the camera out my right side window most of the time so you can really see how big of an area. And we're not even hardly touching the surface here. What's cool though is that the gentleman uh, who owns this property, as I said, he does want me to keep some of this stuff super private and I don't, I don't, I don't blame him. He explained to me why and I totally understand. But he, uh, um, he, was, he was telling me when he asked me what YouTube channel I'm with, I told him, he's like, hey, I've been watching your Fireline updates. Like, no way, that's cool. What's up, Tim? Hey, bud. What's up, Bailey? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> there you go. What's up, Pouncer? Pouncy? So I think these piles of wood right here, Brian's gonna be picking most of this stuff up. So he's gonna load this part of the truck up, obviously. And as I said, they do two or three loads a day. It's just so interesting.
telling you guys, this, this debris is just unbelievable. It's about 7.30 in the morning. I mean, it goes as far as the eye can see. I can't imagine how terrified these people were that live right here, hearing the roar. It had to have sounded like a train coming down. I've watched me plenty of videos on these big mudslides and uh, this was, this was humongous. And son, don't be afraid to pop out. I'm freezing my, my Rastafari and Nene's off. And that's Tim. So Tim, or no, oh, I thought you were, uh, you were Tim over there. Yeah. Say your name again. Nick. Nick. Tim. Nick. Yes, sir. I can give you a verbal update on what kind of happened to your play-by-play. -play, I would love that. Please. You. Yes. Thank you. So, you know that they predicted the storm on. Uh, or, you know, they forecast the, the storm to be Hurricane Hillary and then, you know, end up being a tropical storm here on August 20th last year. And um, we were prepping for, because we got flooded in 2019 with that Valentine's Day flood. And the riverbed here was like 15 feet wide. And the rest of it was trees. And then there's a, a road. The road used to be over there by that power pole going down that side of the river. And... Uh, 2019 it came up and just went to the, the door the doorway on the garage you know so we were prepping for something like that maybe and uh this ended up being six feet of water hitting the house no way yeah ripped the deck off and the, the walls of the garage moved three cabins and uh you know a lot of stuff and just everything around here was just trees and logs uh so water level here was well you can see some of the trees where the bark knocked off up in there. So, you know, the water level's up in here, you know, that's, going through here. That's crazy. Yeah. That's uh, crazy. I think the, the camp manager down below, he stayed. I was going to stay, but I woke up and it started raining at 4 a.m. Uh, on Sunday. And uh, I had a water bucket outside and I got up at 5 o'clock, checked my bucket, and it was about an inch of rain in an hour. I just felt really anxious and I was like, oh God, I guess I better go. <laughs> so yeah. I packed up, you know, finished packing up and took off, took pictures going out. And the camp below, they had their uh, pickup parked out by the road, uh, you know, get it wet out of the way from river flooding and stuff. And uh, the river came up to the road and washed that truck away. No. Yeah. So, but and I had vehicles parked around here and I had uh, my pickup, and when we came back the next morning, there was a log T-bone up to the truck, but did not touch the truck, a log <laughs> under the truck, and piles of sand up to my pickup. No water damage or anything. You know, praise God, you know, just... <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yeah, uh, and, you know, thankful that, you know, when they say evacuate, do it. Evacuate, so... So do you think if you would have stayed, you could have suffered the ultimate well that's where i was living and you know i mean it, it didn't damage the house i mean it did damage the outside and inside you know we flooded we had about 18 inches of water inside so we got it that and stuff so, uh, i probably would have got myself in trouble yeah you know because what 6 p.m he said water was just starting to get to the bottom of the, the camp down below said the water's just starting to get across their log footbridge it's just under the, hitting the bottom of it. 7 p.m. said he was evacuating uh, at higher water. He got in his car to leave and uh, he was like, wait, I just can't go anywhere. He said it was just outrageous, the sound of rocks, trees, and water just roaring through. And it just burst through and, you know, took different paths, old water channels and stuff, wiped out four of their cabins and moved to other cabins. and. Uh, they're still, you know, it was a lot worse even down here than these. Things, so. And you said, so as I told them out of respect, I wasn't going to be shooting yeah. your uh, yeah. your cabins, but you lost 
two or three cabins? Three cabins moved. They're still on site, and we're trying to put it you know, back in place. So they were knocked off their foundations? Yeah, knocked off their piers and stuff. So. Um, and then we've been moving these logs and, and cleaning all the debris out, piles of sand there, and you know, from all around there. We had like two feet of sand down around the house. And, uh, so Edison's been in pulling trees out. You know, they marked uh, from here up to River Glen Camp. They pulled out, I, heard, I think they said around 85 trees or more, and then just more trees are dying. We got 65 dead standing trees in here that, you know, uh, Brian's going to hopefully take out yeah. for us. And yeah. Just like, yeah, quite a devastation. Forest Service and the Highway Administration, this road uh, is under the Federal Highway Administration's jurisdiction, and they're not going to repair it because it's flooded twice in, you know, Five years. They're not going to repair. They're not this section here. Okay. They're going to repair down below and going out to the highway, and they're going to instead of fixing Santa Ana River Road where it washed out, they're going to use Front Line Road. And walk okay. In and repair that. They're not going to widen it. They're just going to make it more a quick road basin. I mean, will you have some sort of easement here to uh, to at least get to that part of the road, or that was? No, or now you... they're not going to do anything to it. Okay. So okay. all we, we have to go out, all that, all our, you know, in, in, ingress and egress will be out to the 38. Our main e it was used to be out just down here, you know, in shorter path, and shorter route to get in and out. So we're not able to operate, you know. So you know, how long? How long uh, before you were able to come back? Um, and that was probably some anxious times, just wondering what what happened, right? Oh, after the flood? Yeah. We came right back in the next uh, day. Wow. On okay. Monday. Well, we came in, and then for the first week, the first five days, we hiked it in from Glass Road, a mile and a half in through the woods to get in, and then uh, we had some some uh, jeeps from Big Bear come down, and they uh, set their uh, jeeps up on the far bank of the river where the bridge washed out yeah. and hauled our bobcat up over the bank and it was winches and cut a ramp in to get so we can drive through. Humanity shows a lot of beauty in these types of situations. Yeah, yeah. And I wish it didn't have to come down to these situations before they start really, <laughs> you know, being so open. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you live in an absolutely gorgeous spot. This is this is my dream, just to really be away from everything, everybody. Yeah. Um, I come from Newport Beach, and I moved up here 10 years ago. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's it's still too much for me, <laughs> you know. But yeah, um, yeah, it's uh, this is definitely a, a dream. But obviously, you, you, you know, there are you know trade-offs. Yeah. And this is certainly yep. All yep. of this. Got a lot of risk living down in here with the fires and rain, water, snow, flood. This was a flash flood, so and uh, I think the Forest Service is still trying to figure out what, what they're gonna do, you know, if they're gonna do anything down in here. But this last winter time, um, did you notice any uh, different type of um, runoff? Like, uh, was were there new streams and new little rivers being created because so much of this was blocked off? Uh, just like groundwater flows and stuff. There's like little channels flowing down through the, through this area um you can see a little channel in here and it's oh, yeah. been slowing down through the summer and stuff groundwater table is a lot higher uh there's a lot of springs and stuff just come up different places like you can see the water flowing there out of the ground there oh yeah but it's dry oh here. yeah so it's just it's, it is coming out right there yeah. isn't it yeah that's amazing yeah so they just keep coming out different places so yeah, that's been made, it's made things difficult being here, just the groundwater tables changed. Uh, pumping right out of the ground. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the medicine's been, you know, trying to replace power poles and lines. Power's still out down here. They're now saying it won't be until like next Monday before the power will be restored. It was supposed to be today. You know, it just they keep updating sure. and pushing it sure. back until they, they know they're done. So, um, are you using a generator? generator? Yeah, oh, good, good, good.
a little expensive. No, sure, <laughs> sure. Eighty kW generator to run a couple houses, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. How much gas does that go through? That's uh, about twelve gallons. A, no, twelve. Yeah, about twelve gallons a day. I mean, wow. we're not running it twenty-four hours, but you know, the generator size to run the whole camp. But there's only a few of us are here. Sure. Uh, off season, so. Yeah. So it is is the uh, is the nature of the camp has that been kind of. Uh, hindered because of this okay okay yeah we're, okay. Not, we're having to rent another camp to, to run right now god bless you for doing that yeah you know it's uh yeah i had told them i was going to keep a lot of stuff private yep um and uh I, I i i just told them that the owner of this property he's doing some amazing things and uh just for respect for you i'm, I'm yeah i'm yeah. not gonna really god elaborate <laughs> yes 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 yeah. yes so. god is great man yeah. god is great there's always a reason for this, you know. It, yeah. It's, it's uh. Well, we keep pressing on through it all. You know, trails bring, you know, build our character. It says in the Bible in Romans five. So, character, faith, faith, hope. That's so, exactly right. That's where we're at, and going through the trials. It's exactly the attitude we need to maintain as well. Yeah. But it yeah. says, uh, my wife was saying through this that, um, you know, these are our circumstances, but God's bigger than our circumstances. And, we're just seeing his hand, you know, bless us, even though this was a disaster, you know. And I feel for all the people out east, I haven't really been able to follow all the news, but I know, you know, yeah, they got it worse. And, yep. uh, so. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, I can't even really uh, understand what I'm seeing out there. Yeah. It's, 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 it's that bad. Yeah. And, you know, but God's over it all, and he's got a plan for all of us, and you know, we put our faith and hope in him seen that all my life so he's good god bless you my friend all right, like, like, and uh what was your first name unless dan, dan. Yeah. all right all right well guys dan is the man <laughs> <laughs> for sure and uh, i want you all to pray for his power to come back soon and uh, just for everything here to uh to just you know get back to the better days and uh because once again he's doing some amazing things and uh, helps a lot of people. And uh, we don't want Dan to be hindered at all. We want him to be able to be completely open and continue his journey and uh, touching lives every day. It's what it's all about, being selfless like that. Helping the ones who really need it. Well, cool. I, I appreciate you doing that for me, doing <laughs> yeah. this, uh, this little interview for me. Um, and I know they're going to absolutely love you too. Um, <laughs> so are, are they just cutting the wood that's already on the ground or are they bringing yeah, they down get, some trees right now? They cut the length that, so they get in the trailer not too long. Yeah, the trailer is 12 feet long so the logs are, some of the logs are longer. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's less than, because we didn't have the money to pay someone to haul stuff off and that, you know, he needs the wood and so... We can help each other so you know what he is he is such an amazing person he is just he's he's my favorite uh, he's got such a beautiful heart yep an incredible incredible man yep. the gentle giant <laughs> very six foot eight giant. Six, six foot eight yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well all right dan all right thank, thank you, you. All right, i appreciate it over, very man. much you're welcome and if you can think of anything else that uh, you may not have divulged to me about this area, I'm all ears. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the highway administration is, uh, they're working on plans to rebuild the roads, the San Juan front line. Well, I was saying that, yeah. So, and they're in the engineering and planning phase and they think that that's to be done by the end of next year and then start construction 2026, 2027. And they're limited to the weather, you know, so like sure. April through November. So, yeah. Uh, like almost five miles of road. And so they'll fix down it in a couple bridges they got to put in. So they're going to go like uh, 160 foot to 200 foot span bridges. So, but the bridge that up here that access this part of the road down here, that's all buried in logs outside the gate. So when you get up there, take a look, you see just 
how high the water, you see how high the logs are piled up yeah. there? That's six or eight feet, six to eight feet high that that water dammed up in there. And then it, 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 it must have just been building up, dammed and burst and, you know, and then uh, Wasawagon got it around 7 p.m. And then I heard from people like uh, down below in Seven Oaks on SoCal Mountains, they had said that night, a 30 foot wave of water Holy smokes. went through Seven Oaks and people were in the trees trying to get out of the water down at Seven Oaks. So whether it was 30 foot or 20 foot, I know there was a major surge that went through just because of all the water. It must have dammed up a number of times and just released, you know, all the logs clogged up. And, uh, <clears throat> this bridge that you're referring to, was that what we right next to the Santa Ana River where we crossed? Is that the, where? That's one of them. Oh, but that's if, one if, of them. Okay. If you want to pause, I'll take you up and show you the other one. Sure. Yeah, it's, sure. Just, it's buried. <laughs> Let's do it. Let me know when to shut it off. Okay. So we're just going to go up the gate and walk out. See the bridge over there? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Guys, so we are headed to a bridge right now with just a massive amount of debris on top of it. Oh my goodness. I was wondering what that was. That was a bridge. Yeah, so the road went through here, down along the Santa Ana. So it's in front of here. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, I can see where it washed away right there, too. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, this was a favorite hangout spot for a lot of uh, people fishing and just day picnics and stuff. They would hit park in here and sit down in nearby the river and uh <laughs> you wouldn't know there was a river in here you would let them down in here huh well this is all public you know forest service property in here forest service property okay yeah. okay just watch your step walking through it's pretty rough i've stepped over this a number of times yeah i was telling my people watching that uh i didn't wear my proper shoes today <laughs> <laughs> So Look at this. This was the river channel here, and it's all filled in with logs and sand, and then it cut through that side and went diverted around the bridge and was the other side over there. Holy moly. This is just unreal to see. Yeah, what's your these sticks catch my shoes and <laughs> I can't believe how fast he got that truck loaded. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So the road went through here and down along that side here. So the river is now basically, well, this was all river up here. The river was over here on the, to the right. And this was trees and some open area. So I just blew out the banks in there and went straight down. And cleared up the road. And these trees have been falling down because they got eroded and then last winter they were falling across the river and blocking it. Unbelievable. There's so many environmentalists of working in the river that, you know, Forest Service can't do much, yeah. you know, without a ton of paperwork and permits and, you know. And, uh, I, I, I mean, just... You see how high the logs are, you know, how, you know, stumps, you know. This log call here, though, I want is just about eight feet, two feet high. At yeah. least, yeah. So that's unbelievable. Yeah. And now all the groundwater, from what a biologist from Edison's contractor said, was that a lot of the the, the roots in the trees are experiencing root shock, and either you know the groundwater or just the sand burying them stuff is killing the, you know all these cedars off and other trees. So that's why these are looking like that. Yeah. Just oh, the, man. The oh yeah. man. Yeah. And those are what incense cedars. So um, beautiful trees. You know. I, I just I just can't believe how powerful Mother Nature is. I mean, guys, once again, this where you're seeing this flow of water, that was not there. That was a bunch of trees and. Just grassy areas and trees, and then, uh, yep. yeah, due to this flow, 
it, then the bottom side of the bridge here, that's where the channel went down through. So it's kind of clear, but yeah. I've been trying to figure out what, you know, a lot of people are like, well, it would have been nice to be here to see what how this went. I mean, not really safety-wise, sure, but sure. just curious of how did it all transpire, you know, God knows. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I mean, it's, I mean, I don't know if, if you guys can tell, but that's, that's the asphalt. That's, that's the road. Yeah. Uh, it's, and it went all the way across here. Right. Yeah, or, the road went here, and it was where that berm it went down that side of the right at the toe of the bank of the, of the hill there. The road went along there, down. Okay. okay. All the way down to Boss Road. Wow. And these trees are still dying. You know, we have a tree down that we, where you're filling down below that just turned in the past few weeks. You know, starting to uh, the needles are turning brown on it. So. And that Forest Service marked other trees down below, you know, a month ago, and, uh, you know, more are still dying, you know. So it's their responsibility to come and take care of this? No. Okay. Well, this year, the river stuff, some of it, I don't know if they're ever going to build, a, you know, if they can budget wise get the money to, to take care of a lot of it, but I mean, it's fuel that needs to probably be removed, so, uh, who knows? I don't know. Uh, I know that they've been working on a project to do the whole, I don't know, so many, like, hundreds of acres of this area to do uh, thinning or whatever, fuel reduction and stuff. Uh, but, you know, they got a lot of permits they got to go through sure. to get it all approved and sure. get the funding and whatnot. So maybe that would be handled as part of that project. I'm not sure. Uh, but takes a lot for them to get their projects through like I guess you know even the thinning that has been up in Big Bear you know just environmentally people trying to protect the environment and then people you know just <laughs> what's the, the yeah. greater necessity I guess yeah you know, try to respect both viewpoints on it but, 100% yeah 100% but it's a beautiful place to be down here you know? no I'm 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 just even with all the destruction, I am just in awe. And the fishermen, uh, you know, if you look at Fisher's Valley, you know, once in a while or whatever, you know, a lot of the pools got washed out, I guess. But, you know, but I've seen some fishermen in here getting some fish, whether it's, I think it's stock stuff, but, you know, they probably down below and up above that they're stocking, so. I was surprised to see this much water. I I had no clue. I had no clue. Yeah, this is about the normal flow year round. You know, and then you know, rainy or snow melt, it comes up in the middle of the so, you know, and gets a little dangerous crossing the river up there. Uh, so hopefully, you know, eventually they'll get new bridges in, and it'll be a lot bigger than this. So yeah. these bridges, this is like four, uh, forty. I mean, uh, you know, 30 feet or span, and uh, they're looking now at the, you know, 160 foot to 200 foot spans on the bridge down below and one up above. So, wow. Yeah. This is definitely very relaxing right here. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see why folks would come down here and <laughs> yeah. th throw out a line for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Or have a picnic, you know. Technically, you're not supposed to camp along the river in here. Yeah, there's supposed to be no camping in here. Uh, it's more day use that it's allowed. Um, some people come in, they camp, and they light a fire. Well, you're just putting a risk on yeah. the whole mountainside. Yeah. You know, and mostly people off the mountain. And you know, like, oh, we're going camping. You know, but they're not aware of. You know, they're putting every you know asset risk if they light a fire. And now we only have one egress. Someone. You know, camps up here along the river and set a fire, horse on fire, we can't get out, you know. So that's a concern for people that are, from, you know, don't live in the area. You know, when the Forest Service says no fires, it's for, you know, or... A darn good reason. Yeah. Yeah. So, mine fired it. I guess a year ago, yeah. So we had the flood and then I think, I remember the Forest Service was doing some stuff over their... They were thinning out over in Angeles Oaks, I guess. And then I saw helicopters flying 
over here over front line road and uh, so I get in the truck went out and check see the smoke and the helicopter crew coming in and someone had been camping out in the foot forest up there and left a fire going and fortunately they got it out within you know an hour or two yeah but um, that's extremely frustrating yeah that's so, but you know a grill I guess is probably allowed and stuff but I don't know all the forest service rules on that but I'm at the protect us, I guess. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Because all it takes is someone being clueless like that and then our our whole entire area. Yeah. You know? So, I, yeah. so this area is all still closed in the Forest Service closure. So um, supposedly the end of November that it's, the order's in place. So everyone that lives in here has to have an exemption to meet to get in. Yeah. So. And workers like Brian as well. Yeah. So we had to get an exemption for... Brian to come in and work and stuff. So, yeah. Well, I was telling him I feel very privileged that I get to be here right now and no one else can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I didn't think about that. Yeah. <laughs> he came in with you. So. Yeah. 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 And the, 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 the you know the Forest Service trying to keep. They're you know they're busy trying to fight fires and if we got people roaming around the forest and you know. Uh, but during the line fire, I had a couple of mountain bikers ride through and let them know that, you know, this closed property and stuff. And then I, Sheriff, later that afternoon was hauling a couple of mountain bikers off the hill down no the way. Yeah. rescuing them. And I'm like, was it those two people or someone else, you know? And that's not what the Forest Service needs and the Sheriff's Department when they're No, to fight those fires. assets need to be fighting yeah. the fire, yeah. So, uh, not people's yeah. bonehead selfish decisions yeah uh, a couple when, you know, when we had snowmageddon <clears throat> a couple two or three i guess well one guy came skiing down the, the side of the mountain and being venturesome and i like you know stuff like that myself but he got lost down here and camp below I ended up putting him up because you know no one could get down to, to get the guy out of here because of all the snow he stayed overnight down there and then a couple weeks later three or four snowboarders came down and the sheriff is out you know trying to locate them and from here up was two feet of snow and he couldn't get through so we took our tractor up and uh gave him a gondola ride in the bucket <laughs> wow wow <laughs> so um don't encourage that to be done you know you get lost up in the woods and you know. yeah that's 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 truly playing with fire that you, you do not want to play with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Enjoy being in out here. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 definitely sad. Sad to see all this, but again I'm very, very grateful to be down here. I got to meet you as well. Yeah, thank you. So that's a nice bonus. <laughs> Seemed like a very good man. <sighs> Guys, I am not good on my feet these days. Make sure I don't lose my phone. My other phone, my new iPhone. I'm recording with my iPhone 11. And I just got the newest iPhone because I haven't had one in five years. So this is where the river channel was. Which, you know, come down below the bridge, down through there. This part of this bank got washed out, but... So the bridge is there, and that was the original channel. Wow. Moved you further away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from the river, yeah. yeah. It's all about location, 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 right? Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, guys, I'm going to shut this off for a moment. Again, out of, out of respect for Dan. piled up and we're here so I must have just had a little dam all the way across the river and
this log was pushed out over, over that area there you know we pushed it back that's how we had to get into the property because uh, this was all logs all these logs that you see on the side here you know piled up they were all down through here this is full of debris all washed out and stuff so we had to fix the road to get in down to our gate you did all that work yeah oh my goodness oh my goodness so we had like a foot and a half of sand through here and uh just you know very but you see how like the debris piled up over along the tree that was yeah. every tree down through the property had piles of roots and you know branches and stuff piled up around them yeah. oh my gosh yeah see here's another tree that fell across the river what size is that and then you know the potential for more flooding because when you get you know rainstorms and more logs and debris coming down this is a dam where those uh, uh, logs across the river and it's just sitting inches above the water so it just piles up and more potential for water to flood through here again but i've asked the forest service to, you know well, can they take it out or can we and this is more of the permit process that they got to go through to get it out yeah. of the, to get in the river, you know, because the Army Corps of Engineers and you know their water rights or whatever uh, authority over it that you know you got everything in the book that to worry about, you know, yeah, <laughs> environmentally. So you can see a concrete slab over there. I yes. don't know if that was an old bridge deck from previous things, uh, from from where I don't know, but it showed up after the flood. I don't think it's from the bridge above. I mean, the one that washed out, but, um, it's like, that, I mean, we had boulders and, uh, large trees, and I was like, man, that's down there, or, you know, and we were walking in on that first week, and coming in, and I was finding stuff that, we were walking by stuff, you know, that we got washed down river, and we walked by a little red, uh, toolbox or something, and, then the second day we were walking in, my wife goes, Yeah, that's your name on the box. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. That was a mile and a half down river. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. But we found some things and uh, bikes and things buried in piles of logs and, you know, stuff. But, yeah. And no one suffered the ultimate consequence here? Not here, the lady down, uh, I don't know, 74 year old woman in Seven Oaks got washed away in her, in her mobile home. Or, yeah, I think it was a mobile home down there. That's heartbreaking. So, yeah. Um, I'm really sorry to hear that. And I, I, you know, search and rescue was in here for a couple, I think a couple of weeks down below, searching the river valley for her and they were unable to find her. So, um, yeah. Forest Service did a really good job. They stepped to the, and I've seen that when, this, when they have fires, when they have incidents like this, their incident teams come in, the people and the staff, and they were really helpful. If, you know, well, they had time and assets to put people on, trying to help us, you know, get permission to do things and get things opened up and whatnot. So, uh, appreciative of those that they had working on it and their staff. Um, so. Yeah, I'm super proud of all of them. Yeah, they they're amazing, and uh, once again, they've they've saved our whole town up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the Radford fire in 2022 was about a mile as the crow flies above us on the ridges up above. So <laughs> uh, that's right. Up, up above that ridge, Big Bear is up, you know, beyond that a mile or two. So couple miles and uh fortunately i mean for us it didn't burn down this way and, and fortunately that uh you know fire crews were able to prevent it from going into big bear so yeah that was the one on the back of snow sunday right yeah. yeah 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 okay i don't know i can't remember how many acres that was but it's not quite as big part of my favorite road up there is still closed the 2n10 oh really okay yeah from bear mountain uh, on that side it's yeah. uh yeah um and so, I guess, the south side of the mountain, how long do you say you've been up here? A decade now. Okay. So, you know, 2015, they had the lake fire, and we weren't here yet. It was another camp that was in here. But that burned from Martin Flats east, I guess, on the 
the South Sergeant 38, then the El Dorado fire, you know, going west in 2020, and then 2022, the Radford, now 2024. So we got a, we're kind of an island in here down in the valley that hasn't burned, and it's what I, I guess you call it old growth in here too. So yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it needs some attention. God willing, you'll keep on avoiding it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's, you know, has enabled them to protect all the camps up in Martin Flats, and uh, but you know, some of the camps are still suffering with the El Dorado fire, the erosion and stuff, and then uh, the issue with camps is. Uh, you know, the Forest Service had to increase their, their use fees and they actually went up about 500% on the camps. And these camps are all non-profit. Yeah. And basically church groups, YMCA, and I know, trying to bring youth up to, to the camps and, you know, trying to minimize costs and they're not making a profit. And uh, because of the land values of, of all the agricultural land down in the valley, they consider the mountain area agricultural land. So we're getting charged the tax rate that they're paying down below, same here. You know, we're not farming, we're not yeah. doing anything, but it's considered agricultural land. So uh, a lot of the camps are being affected. It's, 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 you know, going from a few thousand dollars a year in fees to tens of thousands of dollars a year and fees, you know, and, you know, some camps are, you know, closing their, have closed their doors or, or coming to the point and now also with, you know, the, all the fire issues, you know, insurance, uh, Church Mutual is one of the major insurers for a lot of camps and they, they said, we're not re renew, renewing your insurance, you know, find someone else and most of the camps have either uh, had to discontinue insurance and take the risk or uh, you know do the Cal Fair plan uh, uh, and you know going from uh, being heavily our, our property insured all everything uh, and you know liability and everything for 17 grand a year to only a couple buildings insured and you know double the, double the cost just for a minimal yeah. coverage because you can't afford to so. Do you do you have anywhere where I can put in the description of this video where folks can donate to the cause? Um, probably not. For, okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, uh, you can always find me. I'd be willing yeah, to help. Yeah, I can help. tell you personally, but to put on your website, yeah. I'll have to ask my boss. Because I, I I would have to use my social media to get it out there. Yeah. So yeah, yeah just I uh, can ask my boss. Okay. See. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and it looks like uh, they are... Uh, Ready to go. Yeah. Hey, Dan, let me thank you again. Right. Okay, God bless You're you. You're an today. amazing guy. God bless you, too. Yep. And uh, I just wish you all the best down here. And, uh, yeah, what a what a beautiful spot. But thanks again for giving me all this time with you. You're welcome. I appreciate it. All right, all right guys, we're going to probably hop back in the truck now and get out. Okay. All right, so I just want you guys to see just one of the loads that they bring up. And they were done with this a while back. They just had to chain it in, but I mean, look at the size. Look at the size of this. Mountain men. Mountain men, real men. I mean, seriously. And once again, guys, that right there, that's what a lot of you are buying in Big Bear for your fires. So again, we're gonna put Brian's info in the video so you can buy it from the source. So we're gonna hop back in the truck and we'll do a little recording on the way out and then it will be done. All right guys, so we're back in the vehicle heading out and we're crossing the Santa Ana River again. That destruction, you guys, was mind blowing. I hate to see it, I hate to see it. But to see it in person gives you a lot more respect for what happened. Um, there's part of the bridge right there, also unreal.
generate more money? Yes. Okay. Well, I should say demand. I mean, that's a wide area. And that whole area would be like waters and things, right? So all the way Crazy stuff, you guys. Crazy stuff. Santa Ana Riverbed. I'm keeping the phone out the window, you guys, just so you can see the long path of destruction. As soon as we get back to the main road, I'll shut her down for sure. So you guys, as I said, uh, I'm going to get some info from Dan and if there's any way that we can find a way for folks to donate to that situation. Um, I encourage you guys, as I said, what he's doing is such a wonderful thing keeping it private because, you know, he, he, he's not someone who boasts and brags about the good that he's doing. And uh, this is to keep people safe, that he doesn't want me to really say anything. But um, I'm, I'm going to talk to him a bit further, and if we can get some more information from him, um, I really suggest you guys, you know, if you can, help this guy out. Um, his cost for what he does have gone up over 500% because of what has happened, and they're a non-profit. So, yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys know more down the road about that, but that's the type of person that you want to help, because he helps so many other people. guys till probably the end of November no one's allowed back here so we're getting to see stuff that at this time that no one else can come down here and see other than guys like this who have a, a, a major duty and Brian's doing all this stuff on this guy's property to help him like it, it's he, he's not really making that much money it's it's just that's the type of heart he has and you guys saw how huge that load is he's doing this multiple times every day to help de-stress the guy's property it's it's just welcome to big bear really amazing people i'll get there someday dry brush over here, man. It's, it's just a little nerve-wracking. Yeah. He was telling me about all the major natural disasters here, and it like, always just surrounds them. It's like very lucky that obviously this flow did go through most of his property, but uh, 
one of the most beautiful views you guys have ever seen.
entire drive, you guys, there's just debris everywhere. I, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Just on the other side of the river? Yeah, we uh, cleared up in between all of those mountains. Like we're doing for this guy? Yeah. Wow, oh, man. So much effort, so much bad you guys but I, I had no idea this is just the ultimate destruction small part of this I mean it's it's everywhere you guys for miles and miles and miles show you guys before we uh, cut out for the day. That's the other side of Highway 38. This goes way up here still. Right around this bend up here, there's, there's going to be quite a view as well. 25 miles from, from Big Bear right here. In the wind, you guys.
guys, thank you for cruising along today. I was very privileged to get to go down there and another nice surprise, we got to meet Dan. Dan's super cool. So uh, yeah, again, thanks for cruising. Um, sad to see all that chaos, but uh, you know, it is what it is. And uh, yeah, thank you, my buddy Bry. Tim, thank you, bro. I appreciate it. And thank you, Mr. Miss Bailey. And I hope you guys have a really good rest of your week. And I uh, hope you really understand the depth of how tragic this whole situation was. Uh, the news doesn't, I, I mean, I, I had no idea. So just take care and talk to you guys later. It's the 16th of October, 2024. Peace out.